We have time now. It's our GMA exclusive interview. It's with the family of NFL Super Bowl champ Demarius Thomas. Speaking for the very first time since his death last year, they are sharing what they have learned about his condition and how they hope it will help future athletes. Kaylee Hartung joins us with that story for us. Good morning, Kaylee. Good morning, Robin. Demarius Thomas made plays on the football field that could electrify a stadium, and he had a smile that could light up any room. But in the last year of his life, his family says they saw that light within him dimming. Now, seven months after his shocking death, they're finally getting answers. Demarius Thomas, nice move. At just 33 years old, Super Bowl champion Demarius Thomas's death rocked the NFL. You're going to see a tribute right now for the Broncos. And the fans now realize what they're doing. Found unresponsive in his shower in December 2021, the mysterious circumstances of his death are now coming to light. Cardiac arrest, you know, is the way that they're trying to say that, what kind of happened to him. <clears throat> Suffocated, he died. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, his parents now sharing what they've learned since donating his brain to research. He suffered from CTE stage two. The first cases of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, the degenerative brain disease known as CTE, were found in the brains of former NFL players nearly two decades ago. At Boston University's CTE Center, Dr. Ann McKee says she's diagnosed it in six to 700 athletes after death from amateurs to professionals in just about any sport associated with hits to the head. What did you find when you studied Demarius Thomas's brain? We found what we've seen in so many other players uh, under the age of 34. On the basis of multiple lesions in the frontal lobes and temporal lobe, uh, beginning degeneration of deeper areas of the brain, he was diagnosed with CTE stage two. CTE itself does not cause death. You don't die from CTE. What CTE does is it changes your behavior and your personality. Thomas's parents say they saw him struggling in the year leading up to his death. They knew his 10 seasons in the league riddled his body with physical injuries, but he was suddenly experiencing a deeper pain they couldn't explain. He was paranoid like all the time, but memory loss, I saw that as well. Every single day he complained about, about having a headache. His mood would change and he would also isolate himself sometimes. Yeah. He was like, Mom, I don't know what's going on with my body. You know, I got to get myself together. And he said, I don't feel like myself anymore. He was seeking medical help. Not sure if the medical help he was seeking was helping him, which I, from my understanding right now, what I've learned, it wasn't helping him. What answers did the CTE diagnosis give you, Bobby? When they start explaining side effects, warning signs, and that's when the bell started ringing. When they said it, I was like, man, he was doing that. He did that too. And I fought it myself because I said, I know I could have done more. A lot of families have tremendous guilt, but the truth is we don't have any specific treatment for CTE at this time. These guys suffer in silence and they have a lot of trouble finding anyone in the medical professional field who actually knows what's going on. It's an invisible injury. In 2021, Thomas also started experiencing violent seizures, which Dr. McKee believes were due to severe traumatic injuries off the football field, including a car wreck and a fall down stone stairs. He would shake so much like he couldn't breathe. You, you know, you could hear him say, T -t 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 -t, like the wind trying to come out. They got to the point where he was having three or four back to back. Mm -hmm. If it wasn't for those seizures, he, he would have went back to playing football. I'm Demarius Thomas. Uh, I finally came to a decision to hang it up. In July 2021, uh, Thomas announcing his last, retirement. You know, a year or so, or whatever it's been, just been trying to find myself. It ain't easy leaving football. Him finding himself was really trying to find out what was going on mm -hmm. with himself without them knowing what he was going through. Yeah. He was a very private person. Yes. He didn't want people to know, you know, what was going on. Less than six months later, after having another seizure, Thomas was dead. How did you all weigh the decision to donate his brain to be studied? At first, I didn't want to do it. I was against it. But then I remember a conversation DT and I had where he said that, you know, Mom, if, ever, if anything ever happens to me, I want to be able to help other That's players. It. 
And in response to the growing number of CTE cases found in NFL players after their death, the league has developed intensive protocols for players who have or show signs of head injury, and they've invested hundreds of millions of dollars in helmet and concussion research. Now, Dr. McKee tells us she believes they are on track to be able to diagnose CTE in living players within the next five years, which she says could entirely change the landscape of how this disease is addressed. Guys. Sure, we can speed that up. Boy, within five years, mm -hmm. that would be huge. Mm -hmm. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.